Hi, this is Jonathan. In this video, I'd like to feature these three units from the MV series by Vox. Stick around. So what we're going to feature today is the uh, MV Boutique. Uh, this, of course, is modeled after, uh, kind of like, modeled after the Dumple M. This is the Vox Clean, which is uh, modeled after the Fender Deluxe Twin River. This is the Vox AC, of course, it's modeled after their AC series uh, by Vox itself. Now, I did a video previously about the MV50 Rock, in which I recorded it through the line out, phone out jack, uh, which incidentally is function as a cabinet simulated line out, you know, a uh, simulated cab out. And it sounded pretty well, pretty pretty good, you know. Um, but I didn't have a chance to record it through a, a real cabinet. This time around, the guys in City Music provided me with a cap. This is the BC112 by Vox. Uh, it consists of a 12 inch Celestion V type uh, speaker, semi open back, you know, with a parallel uh, in. And um, it sounds pretty, pretty awesome.
Now, each of these units have uh, various different controls. You know, they're all are kind of different in many ways. But the back, they're the same. You know, the back has the, of course, the speaker out, the impedance where you can actually uh, switch between uh, how big your cab is going to be and, you know, how loud it's going to be. The EQ where you can actually uh, set it to a flat and deep. And of course, the standby switch on and a economy mode where you can turn it on and the unit will turn off after a couple of minutes. And of course, the phone in line uh, out where you can actually record this through your door directly without using a cabinet. These are all the same. These are all universal in all the units. You know, they're all the same. But the front panel differs a whole lot. Now, this is the boutique. Of course, you have the input, you know, and this cute little um, VU meter. Now on a boutique, you had the volume, tone, and gain, right? Now this is the same as the AC, exactly the same. You have the uh, volume, tone, and gain, same thing, you know? Um, acts like an amp, you know, if you turn up your gain all the way and you bring down the volume a little bit down, you know, you just not get, just, in order not to blow your ears, you can get a pretty good raunchy distortion sound. If you want a clean sound, of course you, Dial back the gain, you know, and bring up your volume a little bit to compensate a bit, and you can get a pretty good clean tone. And you can get a little bit more body, a little bit more saturation, or uh, if you bring up the gain just a touch, you know, and it's uh, even on the, in, in the 12 o'clock position, you know, you can actually play around with the volume of the guitar, and you can kind of like uh, get the sound that you want uh, just by fooling around with volume stages, you know what I mean? Now for the clean, there is a additional bass and treble. It's no gain, so it's just the main volume, treble and bass, just like an amp. Uh, there's no mid control, unfortunately. You know. Um, now this is relatively a, a, a clean sounding amp, but um, it has that tube driven sound uh, that we're all familiar with the, uh, the Fender Deluxe. And if you were to bring up the volume to the max or close to the max, you can get a little bit of a breakup, uh, which is real nice, you know, if you really want that tower sound. But you will not get that full raunch, raunchy sound that you could get from the rock or from the AC or from the boutique uh, models. Um, I like this one. This is uh, pretty, pretty cool. It gives you a really nice tube driven clean amp. And I think it plays well with pedals. I haven't run through any pedals with it, but I'm guessing that it, uh, yeah, it will work well. Uh, the bad thing about all this MV50 series is that, you know, it doesn't have a center return in the back. You know, that would be really be useful for like, you know, time-based units, you know, you can patch your delays or reverb out from the center and, and, and uh, return, and you can actually use this uh, in a constructive way in the a, in a, in a real world. As it is right now, you have to buy like all these amps to kind of like uh, get a sound that you want, which is, is cool, you know, I, I think that's cool. If you feel like, you know, playing a Vox amp today, you know, I could just get a Vox AC and, and plug it in. But then, you know, to play it through my cabinet and trying to get a good sound, I will have to patch in my effects, all right? Or I will have a problem patching my time-based effects, you know, because, um, it's not uh, it's not really um, conducive running a time based uh, effect through the main input. You know that's never been the case. You know, and I, I guess all you guys will have been familiar with this by now. Uh, you run, you would like to run a time based unit through the send and return of your the back of your amp, which this is lacking. So this is the only thing. This is the only drawback about this. But the sound. You know, this is the one thing that I, I, I'm really impressed with, you know. Of course, it doesn't come close to the real Dumble Amp, uh, which um, I'm not a, a expert because I haven't heard the real Dumble Amp. I mean, I, I heard the Dumble Amp through recordings, you know, from some of the uh, recordings by Larry Carlton who uses a Dumble Amp, you know, and just sound pretty awesome. But then again, I haven't heard a Dumble Amp live, you know, I also I wouldn't, I wouldn't know how to compare. Um, for the uh, clean, uh, it comes pretty close to how a, a Fender Deluxe would sound like. Um, it's, it's nice, it's clear, it's, it's, it has all the qualities of a, a good clean amp, a, a good tube-driven clean amp. 
Now, the um, Vox, this is the unit that I am most impressed with, the uh, AC. Um, it plays really well, clean, and it can get really raunchy. But of course, you couldn't get that sort of a, of a drive that can uh, sustain a whole lot. It's just good for like raunchy chords and maybe some lines, you know, some some uh, nice lines, you know, not overdriven lines, you know. For that, you probably would have to patch in either a booster or a overdrive unit, you know. Um, I like this unit. This is this. I mean, if I were to get a unit, I will probably get this. So check out the uh, other video about the MV50 Rock, where I explain just a little bit about the new tube technology. I think this could be the future. You know, uh, I don't really think um, that the end of uh, tube drip. You know, the traditional tube amps are over. I think they're still being around because there are still many purists like me. Uh, I still prefer <laughs> looking at a vacuum tube, you know, I still like that. It gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling in my heart, you know. Uh, but this is going to take us to the next uh, phase of uh, amp simulation and, 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 and amplifiers, you know, and in general. So I'm just kind of excited how this would evolve uh, in, in the process. I'm just hoping that Vox will come out a maybe a, a little bit longer unit, you know, and uh, with standard returns and maybe a built-in reverb in it, you know, stuff like that. Uh, that would really be so helpful. And having that with a cabinet of your choosing, you can choose a, a eight inch, you know, a twelve or fifteen, you know, whatever you want, and then you have this in your home, and this is so neat, right? I mean, what more can you ask for? Yeah. So I thought uh, this little peek into this MV series would be enough to entice you to just check it out in the shops when you're around there and hear how it sounds like yourself. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up. I've been pretty busy with work, so I'm trying to come out on videos as much as I can. So forgive me, right? So you guys take care to the next video. I'll see you. Ciao.